lecture two for ES101 physical well-being one deals with the principles of physical fitness and in order to understand physical fitness it's going to be advantageous for us to define physical activity exercise and then lead into some of these principles of physical phys fitness as they play towards health and overall wellness of an individual so to start out physical activity physical activity can be defined as skeletal muscle movement that requires energy. And you'll notice that my abbreviation for energy is NRG. Now I could spell it out, but I'm a biologist, and biologists are too lazy to do so. When you increase activity, so daily physical activity, when you increase daily physical activity, this does have a precipitous uh, increase in your overall wellness. And there is a relationship here between the volume of activity and the amount of wellness benefits that are gained. Uh, it also can be said that anything, any type of physical activity from gardening to playing pickup basketball is actually going to be better than being sedentary. Now physical activity does have a temporal component and the way in which we apply physical activity throughout a 24 hour period is going to have differences in the benefits to physical activity. So consider a 30 minute physical activity session. So perhaps this is going to be uh, 30 minutes all at one time of let's say riding your bike you actually have a lower benefit if you apply in temporal fashion a 30-minute session. Um, in other words, this 30-minute session doesn't undo or compensate for the other continuous 23 hours and 30 minutes of sedentary lifestyle. But if we change up the way we apply this 30 minutes and we look at rather than one whole session looking at three sessions each of about 10 minutes so this is still a 30 minute total investment however when we apply a three 10 minute session physical activity scenario throughout the day we actually see a larger benefit so an increased benefit compared to that same 30 minute commitment if it's done all at one time. This breaks up that 23 hours and 30 minutes of sedentary time into smaller chunks. So rather than being one continuous 23 minute 30 second time period, you may have, you know, uh, seven hours and 50 minutes three times a day intervened with these 10 minute sessions. And this just really helps to increase the overall benefit of physical activity. And what this leads into is going to be um, activity acting to break the sedentary silence. And when physical activity is applied like this to break up that sedentary silence multiple times throughout a 24-hour period, we gain a much larger benefit to our health and to our wellness. Uh, in addition to physical activity, it's also going to be proper to give some sort of definition here to exercise. And exercise is a little bit different than physical activity. In fact, not all physical activity is exercise. So going to the grocery store or gardening, um, things that are not truly exercise can still be physical activity. On the converse here though, all exercise counts as physical activity. And so really what you're seeing here is that there's a continuum from physical activity towards exercise and eventually we're going to continue that continuum to 
physical fitness. So physical activity leads to exercise, which leads to physical fitness. Now exercise, by definition, uh, being a little bit different than physical activity, we typically think of exercise as being planned. It has a structure, so it's going to be structured. And it's going to involve repetitiveness. So planned, structured, and, and repetitive. And exercise really is going to be intended to improve fitness. So the overall goal of exercise is to improve fitness, whereas the overall goal of physical activity may actually just be for weight management purposes, or it may be to uh, improve the overall wellness of the individual, whereas exercise is intended to improve these physical characteristics that are known as fitness. And we're going to begin to discuss those here uh, in just a short amount of time. But before we do that, I, I do want to go back and give you more of a basic guide on how to incorporate physical activity into your daily life. So this is going to be a basic guide for the incorporation of physical activity into daily life. And it is important to incorporate physical activity into your daily life, again, so you can break up that sedentary silence. Uh, sometimes we refer to this characteristic of incorporating physical activity into one's life or daily life as lifestyle physical activity. And the image that I'm showing you here on the screen, you can see that this gentleman is working in some sort of office space. He's got a computer in front of him and some other uh, equipment. And the table is, is an elevated table so that he can fit a bike on a, on a trainer under there. And as he's working, he's actually pedaling, which incorporates a large amount of physical activity into this gentleman's life. So you don't have to necessarily go to these um, sorts of lengths to incorporate physical activity, um, but it, it's still important to uh, get out and be physical. Maybe it's choosing to walk to the cafeteria instead of riding uh, in a car or driving in a car, or maybe it's choosing to walk to class and using the stairs rather than the elevator. Each of these things or these little t t uh, touch points of physical activity can be very beneficial to your overall wellness. So some of the benefits of incorporating daily physical activity that, that you begin to um, that you begin to receive is an increase in aerobic fitness. Uh, now aerobic fitness type training um, to enhance or aerobic fitness type physical activity to enhance your um, your overall aerobic fitness. Uh, one of the important things here for this type of exercise, in addition to incorporating the physical activity into your daily life, that so-called lifestyle physical activity, uh, is to spread out the cardiorespiratory aerobic fitness type training. Spread this out through the day and also throughout your normal week. So spread out aerobic fitness or cardiorespiratory training throughout your day and throughout the week. So you don't want to just accumulate all of your cardiorespiratory or, or aerobic fitness type exercise all at one time of the day or all of uh, one time of a week. Now just as a general rule here with this type of exercise, aerobic fitness type training or cardiorespiratory training, you gain some very substantial health benefits substantial health benefits if you incorporate on average 150 minutes of moderate or 75 minutes of vigorous cardiorespiratory training in a given week. So this 150 minutes, many of you probably watch more TV in a given week than 150 minutes and certainly probably more than 75. This is basically maybe two sitcoms will uh, accumulate 75 minutes of your of your time. More aerobic fitness, cardiorespiratory tra type training provides a greater benefit.
and this is up around 300 minutes of moderate physical activity or 150 minutes of vigorous activity. So just kind of giving you again these basic guidelines. One, incorporate physical activity in your daily life. Two, it's important to have aerobic fitness or cardiorespiratory type training uh, incorporated into every week. Uh, and, and you're going to get substantial health benefits between 150 moderate, 75 vigorous uh, um, physical activity or aerobic fitness, I should say, and greater benefit if you exceed 300 for moderate, 150 for vigorous. Additionally, it's also important to train your muscles for muscle fitness. And the general basic guideline here is going to be about two days a week. And you want to exercise all of the major muscle groups. And you want to work these major muscle groups at a moderate or high intensity. So right off the bat, if you do nothing else besides incorporate some daily physical activity, the 150 minutes of moderate physical activity, and two days a week of moderate muscle uh, fitness training, already if you're sedentary you're going to vastly improve your overall fitness. But what if you're interested in doing uh, some weight loss or, or achieving some weight loss? Then your recommendation here might be a little bit different. For weight loss most would recommend up to 90 minutes of physical activity on a daily basis. So 90 minutes per day. However, we have to note that this type of training even though very beneficial, may not cause substantial decreases in mass. However, you will lose mass, and it may take a prolonged period of time, but in the immediate, that increase in physical activity by incorporating 90 minutes of physical activity uh, a day is going to lead towards a higher level of health benefits and a much reduced risk for many types of chronic diseases. Now, you're in a course right now that's called Physical Well-Being. And I basically have just provided you basic guidelines on how to improve your health, how to improve your wellness. And really the big take home message here at the start of this class, so the big take home message is that if you want to improve your health and your wellness, simply increase your physical activity, increase how frequently you are physically active. Increase the decisions or increase the frequency in which you're making decisions that will lead towards your higher level of physical activity. So is this where we end the class? If you want to improve your physical well-being, do you just simply improve and increase your physical activity? So really one question to pose here, are there any further benefits above and beyond this basic guide that I've already provided you? So further benefits. And hopefully you'll understand that this whole class is going to be devoted to those further benefits. And if you want to 
take a look at this picture here in more detail, just go ahead and pause the video for a few minutes and read through all of these benefits that come from not just incorporating physical activity or exercise on a daily basis, but becoming physically fit. So the further benefits really come not from incorporating more physical activity or more exercise, but doing it wisely in such a way that you can become physically fit. And that's really what we want to talk about in this class, physical well-being, is how do we come, become physically fit? How do we tune in to all of these different health benefits that are listed here, these wellness benefits that are listed here, from becoming physically fit? And obviously we're going to use principles of physical activity and we're going to use principles of exercise, but we're not just simply going to say just increase physical activity and you'll increase the benefits. We want to do it wisely and we want to use some very basic scientific principles here to achieve, uh, to achieve these goals. So um, this is really where we're going to begin. And, and what I want you to, to really begin to look at here is, is this continuum from from sickness or illness to this concept of being physically fit. And you'll see right in the middle of that continuum is this idea of wellness that's achieved through daily physical activity. So this is our basic guide. I'm telling you with the basic guide how to become well or how to have wellness. And you'll gain all of these other um, benefits such as reductions in blood pressure, reductions in overall body fat, increase in bone density, and so on and so forth. But we can continue along this continuum to achieve physical fitness. Now, just having a higher level of physical activity is a great thing, but having a higher level of physical activity and exercise that's guided by scientific principles is how you achieve physical fitness and how you achieve achieve maximal benefit from these uh, uh, ideas of being less sedentary and, and more active uh, more active in your life when we look at physical fitness we actually break physical fitness up into five different health related components and you have to engage each of these five health related components to really gain the benefit of becoming physically fit. So I want to start with each of these and then we're going to take in the next five lectures after this one each of these different components of physical fitness these health related components and we're going to see how we effectively apply them to move beyond just simply being healthy simply being well to being physically fit. Okay so the five health related components The first one is cardiorespiratory endurance. And cardiorespiratory endurance is really a measure of your circulatory system and your respiratory system, or the, the lungs and, and uh, the um, components of gas exchange that help out with healthy metabolism. And when we think of cardiorespiratory endurance type training, we're thinking about prolonged dynamic large muscle exercise. So prolonged dynamic large muscle exercise. And so this is riding a bicycle for a longer period of time or running for a longer period of time or it may even be brisk walking for a long period of time or a longer period of time. The next health related component of physical fitness is called muscle strength. And when we think of muscle strength we're actually talking about the maximal amount of force production by a muscle. So the maximal amount of force production, and we typically think of this as being in one given effort. So it might be a one rep max on the bench press or a one rep max 
on a leg squat. The third component, make an adjustment to the screen there, the third component uh, of health-related fitness, or the third health-related component of fitness, rather, is muscle endurance. And when we think of muscle endurance, we are thinking about the muscle's ability to undergo uh, repeated contractions or to contract repeatedly or to remain contracted for a prolonged period of time. The fourth uh, health-related component of fit fitness is flexibility. I want to make sure that from the very onset of uh, this discuss discussion of flexibility that this doesn't immediately uh, equate in your mind to stretching because actually we're not talking about stretching here. Flexibility is a uh, characteristic um, that details the use of a joint and how well that joint can go through its full range of motion. Okay, and the more flexible an individual is coupled to strength, the better disease resistance or injury resistance that individual has. The last health related component of fitness is body composition. And body composition is a ratio that details the amount of fat to the amount of fat-free mass. And when we say fat, we're really, um, we're really looking at adipose tissue versus fat-free mass, which is going to be things like uh, your bones and your connective tissue and your muscle tissue, everything that really is not adipose tissue, a water component. Um, all are going to be parts of body composition. So if you can train each of these five areas and reduce your fat free uh, to or your fat to fat free mass ratio, uh, improve your body composition, each of these five areas of uh, physical fitness are going to lead to a higher level of your own fitness and your own uh, ability to be physically fit for life. Now, in addition to the five health-related components of physical fitness, there's actually some skill-related components as well that we should briefly, briefly mention. So as you begin to train those five health-related components of physical fitness, you also are going to begin to improve some skills. And most of these skills um, relate to your neuromuscular abilities. And so this is the idea of how well your nervous system interacts with skeletal muscle. So sometimes these can be referred to as the overall neuromuscular fitness or neuromuscular related fitness. And this neuromuscular fitness relates to the ability of the central nervous system, your brain and your spinal cord, to coordinate muscle activity. Now, a lot of this you could think of, oh, I'm going to be able to hit a baseball better, or maybe I'll be able to catch a football better. But there's so much more to neuromuscular fitness than just uh, increased ability in sports. This is actually going to improve things like balance, and it's going to improve uh, your, your ability to respond and react to stimuli. And as you get older and older, as you begin to age, having a high level of neuromuscular fitness reduces risk for things like falls, um, reduce your risk for uh, other types of injuries. So really these skill-related components are not just limited to the athletically minded, but also can enhance the daily, uh, the daily ab abilities of, uh, of individuals as we go through the aging process. Many of these are thought to be specific to a sport, but they can also, like I've already mentioned, be specific to an activity such as climbing stairs or driving, 
and neuromuscular fitness uh, is, is going to be very beneficial to help increase your abilities in either of these places, whether it's in a given sport or climbing the stairs, driving, what, whatever you may have. They're going to include speed, agility, power, balance, coordination, and reaction. So really what we're going to do for the remainder of much of this uh, semester, ES 101, is we're going to begin to detail how these principles and components can be used for training for physical fitness. So if you're completely sedentary, then you're at a much higher risk for many types of sickness and disease. If you take those basic guidelines, increasing your amount of lifestyle physical activity and some exercise, you gain this component of wellness or you'll, you'll gain uh, additional wellness. If you begin to apply principles for training for physical fitness, you become more physically fit and you gain this higher level of fitness. And you can think of this as being a higher level of disease resistance, higher level of uh, resistance to injury, etc. And really the reason that physical fitness training works is because the human body was designed to adjust to meet physical demands. In other words, the physical or the human body is designed uh, is actually designed to be physically active and to be physically fit. So we have this innate ability to adjust to physical demands. And this process is known as adaptation. So when you increase stress from physical activity and exercise, the body responds to meet that additional physical demand through this process known as adaptation. Now when we look at adaptation, adaptation actually occurs uh, through three different mechanisms. So in other words, there are three adaptabilities that humans have. So three adaptabilities. And there's obviously going to be some individual differences. Some people are going to respond differently or better or worse to certain stresses than others. But these three general principles still apply. The first one is called specificity. And specificity is the idea that specific tasks help you to develop specific areas of fitness. So if you go and train cardiorespiratory, let's say you go for a bike ride, you are going to have a specific response or ad adaptation that occurs in your uh, pulmonary system and in your circulatory system and in uh, endurance in, inside of muscles. So specificity is the idea that we adapt specific areas of fitness based off of the specific demands that are imputed on the body. The second adaptation is called progressive overload. Now, some individuals would actually break progressive overload up into um, progressive and overload. I like to incorporate the two together because really they are the opposite sides of the same coin. So 
So progressive overload is this idea that you adapt to the physical demand. And to illustrate this, I do have an image here to, to show you. And what you're seeing here is as you change the, uh, the amount of physical demand on the human body, so here you can see we go through this kind of wave-like progression where we increase physical demand, decrease, and then increase a little bit more, then decrease, then increase a little bit more. And as we do that, we make this progress. So that's the progressive component. And the idea of overload is that we go over what we're normally adapted to. So you can see that there's this kind of like peak area that's above this, this flat line here. This is our uh, current level of fitness. And as we progressively go over that current level of fitness with time, increasing the overload as we progress, we gain additional fitness. Uh, there's, we're going to come back to progressive overload here in just a second, and I'm going to talk about how you manage progressive overload because this is really the scientific reason behind improving physical fitness with the least amount of effort. In other words, progressive overload helps us get the most bang for our buck when it comes to physical fitness. The third adaptability that humans have is a, con uh, a ability called reversibility. And this is actually one that we try to avoid as we're improving our fitness. Reversibility is the idea that the fitness improvements that one makes with progressive overload diminish as that load subsides or decreases. If you stop training within two months, you lose 50% of your fitness. And that's a concept or that's the, um, uh, uh, because of the reversibility that's innate within the human body. So it's very important to continue to stay physically fit, um, continue to increase that, that overload and to use progressive overload in order to stave off the, um, the issues of reversibility. Now, progressive overload in, in this graph here may be a little bit complicated, but there's actually a very simple way, a very simple model that we can turn to to manage progressive overload to help improve fitness. And really, the remainder of much of this semester is going to be de dedicated to managing this concept of progressive overload with this model that's called the FIT principle, and that F-I-T-T -T is actually going to be an acronym. And so we're going to look at each of those five health-related components of physical fitness, and we're going to deal with how to model and structure planned workouts to optimize the ability for your body to go through increases in physical fitness. The F stands for frequency, and this details how frequently should you be participating in cardiorespiratory or muscle strength or muscle endurance training. The I stands for intensity. And intensity is going to detail how hard or how difficult a workout should be. The third is the, the first T which is going to be time and that's going to be a duration. So in other words you may say three to five days a week for cardiorespiratory endurance at a moderate to high intensity uh, being, you know, 85% of your maximum heart rate for 45 to 60 minutes. And then the type, the last T here is type, would just simply be that it's cardiorespiratory endurance or muscle endurance or muscle strength training or flexibility training. So each of those five health-related components of fitness, we can organize the frequency and the intensity and the time of individual workouts to manage progressive overload to gain the most, uh, the most bang for our buck when it comes to improvements in your overall physical fitness. All right, so that ends this um, second lecture.
the next labs that you're going to have due, it's actually just a single lab. It's going to be lab 2.1. And lab 2.1 is going to be due in February, on February 10th, 2016. Again, in my office, Miller 205, and have it to me by 12 p.m. All right, thank you, and I hope you have a great day.